demonstrating how to pose your skelly figure to match your athlete. So at this point, you should have selected a photo of an athlete from the ESPN The Body web series. And I suggest that you take a screenshot of the enlarged version or the zoomed in photo. Uh, that seems to be the easiest way to get the image that you need. So uh, this is the photo that I'll be working with. And I have that pulled up on my tablet. I'm going to be navigating back and forth between this photo and um, the Skelly app. You can also print this photo out or have it on another device, whatever, whatever makes sense to you. That way you can see what I'm doing. So going to Skelly, there are a couple of different really useful things to know at the beginning. First of all, uh, you can toggle back and forth between this kind of complete anatomical view of the skeleton or you can go into a kind of simplified, what they call robo view of the skeleton here. Uh, and that's, this is a little easier to manage, a little easier to pose. Touching the screen and moving back and forth rotates and tilts the body, uh, the figure that I'm working with. Using two fingers, I can zoom in. Like so, and turn. I zoom back out again and then I can select any individual bone and move that bone using this kind of uh, compass like shape that comes up and these shapes are keyed to exactly the way that these bones move so for example the uh, joint of the elbow only rotates in one direction in one dimension whereas the joint of the shoulder and rotate in multiple directions. Uh, so it's really cool that this is anatomically correct in that way. And that's what makes this, this ch kind of challenging. Okay, so going back to my athlete, uh, I'm noticing that she's facing the left, that her upper body is tilted forward, uh, her leg bones, her femurs are kind of bent forward. So I'm gonna try to get the core of her body and the biggest bones of her body set up first. I'm going to face my model this way. I'm going to select the backbone, the spine, and I can move that to match the tilt of my athlete. I'm going to select the legs, and it's kind of helpful to pivot your figure and think about how exactly you're trying to make this move happen. And you can see as I select on one of the arrows, that's, that's the axis that I'm turning. Oh, that's the hand. So my arrow is blue now, and I can move that leg back and forth. Okay, let's go back to the front here. I think my figure is going to be turning even more. If I select the hip bone, that kind of pivots the whole model. You can see how it's turning the whole model there. I'm going to tilt the whole model forward because I think her hips are actually tilted forward a little bit. I can select the neck. Make sure I've got what I think I've got. Yep. And pull the head upward. And what's kind of cool is I can also move the head independently. So not only can you move your neck, you can move, you can pivot your head back and forth. All of this is, is correct anatomically, which I find really, really neat. Okay. I'm going to pull this leg up a bit more. Bend the tibia down. I think this leg is forward more, if I remember correctly. And this is bent back. Sometimes it helps if you can't quite get the part of the figure to move the way you want to just pivot around a little bit. And this I know is coming forward. Okay, let's take a look. Whoop. Let's take a look at our photo. Okay, 
looking at my photo, a couple of things I'm seeing that are different. I'm seeing that the athlete's hand is kind of turned into her body. And I know since the elbow doesn't spin, that's got to be happening in the shoulder. That's got to be happening in the humerus. I'm seeing that her front foot is kind of tilted forward like she's about to land on her toes. Uh, I'm thinking a little bit about where that back arm is. And I, I don't have a lot of information, but I can see that she's dribbling and that that arm is bent a little more and more forward than her left arm. Uh, so those are all little changes I'm going to try to make in my skelly figure. I uh, talked about the foot, so I'm going to turn the foot uh, down. I still feel like somehow this, this position is not quite right. Yeah. Okay, like, like the weight is on the back foot. Getting this to be just right and to feel like the body is in motion takes some time. Uh, the first time I tried this, I probably spent most of an evening kind of going back and forth, trying slightly variant versions of where different body parts were. It's also really crucial to look at this from different directions. Like looking at this from the front, that figure would fall to the left, right? Like that, that foot's way too far over, the center of balance is too far over. Uh, that's that's not what she's doing. So I know, just like the shoulder blade, shoulder joint here, the hip joint allows movement in a kind of cone shape, like in a circular way coming out of that shape. So I can move this leg out like that. All of a sudden, that looks a lot more stable. Like that's how someone would actually be running if they were running. Looks better from the back too. I think she's turning or tilting her body, bending forward just a little bit more. And then we talked about this arm being turned in. Another thing I can do is try to look at the larger shape that her body makes in that particular pose. Like, where did her feet line up with her head? I think this is down a little bit more. Let's go back to the, oh geez. Let's go back to the photo. <laughs> Stop it. There we go. Let's go back to the photo. Okay, so there's almost like this triangle from her head to her feet. Her head is a little bit further to the left and her foot is a little bit outside of the back of her body. And her knee is almost right up below her rib cage, but in front of her pelvis. All right, let's see how I'm doing with that. All right, this knee needs to come forward. That's the first thing I notice. And this needs to come back. And then we talked about that kind of equilateral triangle that we have going on here. talked a little bit about where what we can guess about that arm. I'm thinking if she's got the ball in her hand, she's kind of dribbling like that. This is coming, the arm was bent a little bit more. That looks a little bit more like what I think I'm seeing. And I think her head is almost like tucked into her shoulder a little bit. Something kind of like that. I can also tilt and twist the rib cage itself. I think she's leaning over her, kind of leaning over her side a little bit. And maybe even turning away. Let's try leaning the other way and see what that looks like.
go back to the photo. Do I feel like I'm seeing? Yeah, I think her. She's like, oh god, where'd she go? Nope, wrong one. There. I think she's kind of like crunched up here. Like her her upper torso is leaning over. Yeah. Okay. So in that sense, I want. Let's try from the back. That might be easier. Yeah, I want that like pinch right there. All right, so this is how I'm making decisions and how I'm kind of trying variations of, of what I've got going on. Um, it's definitely like this leg needs to be somehow different. So I'm going to keep fussing with this uh, and we'll see how far I get. Okay, so I've spent some time working on my skelly and I'm really happy with how this is looking. Uh, so there are a couple of sort of small changes that seem to happen, seem to help a lot. Uh, figuring out exactly how the femurs were set for this, this particular pose. Working really, really carefully with the curve of the spine. There's this really beautiful poetic curve to how she's kind of leaning over that leg. Uh, and then getting the hands turned just right. I actually think this could be turned even a little bit more inward. Okay, cool. So we haven't talked yet about the options that are on the, the kind of top bar over here. So let's look at those. And you'll see you have a couple different options. You can change the background. So it can be kind of a light or a medium tone uh, or a dark tone. Depending on how you're setting up your light, that might be more or less helpful. You can also change the position of the light and the direction of the light. It was kind of neat with this project to play with that really almost backlit pose. So that sense that the light is, is kind of hovering, you can see what I'm doing here, kind of hovering behind her, catching, catching the curve of the back and the top of her head. And if you go back to the photo, that's really what's happening. I, isn't that so cool? I think that is really neat. Okay, so you can play with that to try to match your light. Uh, and then you can save your pose. And it's probably a good idea to try this, uh, to save your pose as you're going. So I can go to my pose library, uh, save pose. You can see it shows up up here. And then I can also share my pose. So when I do that, I get a bunch of different options. I can text it, I could text it to Genevieve if I want to, or Andrea Martins. Um, I could also save an image. Uh, and that allows me to basically take a photo of what I'm doing. So the next part of your project, once you're happy with your, your posed skelly, is to choose a new view. So choose a view, kind of imagining that you're taking this athlete, freezing them in time, or freezing that moment in time, and kind of like matrix style, like spinning around. So deciding a different version, a different point of view that would be kind of interesting or, or poetic to draw. Um, I actually think the spine of this figure is really beautiful, uh, but it's hard to see what the legs are doing from this point of view. Um, so I think something like that would be really neat. Now I might play with getting the light just the way I want. Um, I'm gonna turn it back to that skeleton mode. I might take a picture in both modes just so that I have a lot of resources, a lot of sense of what I'm looking at. And you can see as I'm moving the light around, it's kind of catching different planes. Uh, so you might think about like what are the most useful shapes of light for myself. I actually think lighting this from the front is kind of interesting because then I get that shadow inside the rib cage, that light, or that shadow inside the pelvis, that light on the side of the pelvis, the shadow kind of breaking across there, um, light and shadow on the on the femur. Yeah, I think that looks good. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to my pose library, share a pose save image. And the next step is to pull up your image and to make a drawing from this different view of your pose. I like that one too. I'm going to take a picture of that. Awesome. 